The following video is for EME 303 Fluid Dynamics at the Pennsylvania State University from Group 11. For this project, we've decided to examine the behavior of explosions and the comparison of Hollywood special effects versus real-world conditions. The following scene takes place in the movie Tropic Thunder, during the scene where Tug Speedman, who is played by Ben Stiller, escapes from a drug lord's village. I got this! After seeing the explosion, we wanted to analyze exactly how much of the physics involved were true to real-world conditions. Upon watching the previous scene several times, we hypothesized that the explosions exhibited incorrect behavior for the following reasons. 1. The Van Neumann spike, due to the lack of a visible blast wave. 2. Detonation velocity, where a man is able to outrun a chain of explosions. And 3. Force of the pressure wave, where a full adult man is blown completely sideways from a nearby explosion. After comparing what was seen in the movies to theories and actual real-world explosions, we have concluded the following. The explosives used were not high-grade. CGI was utilized to place the actor in the scene as per Hollywood industry standard, and external forces such as wires or pulleys were utilized to pull the man to the side. First, what is an explosion? Well, an explosion is a sudden release of energy from detonating a particular compound. It is best described using the chapman Jugut interface, which describes how the exothermic reaction of the detonation occurs on a molecular level, which results in an explosion. As seen in the graph, the chapman Jugut point is the point in which the compound is burning at a rapid rate. However, the most interesting part of the detonation is the explosion it generates. An explosion consists of two parts. The Van Neumann spike, which is commonly referred to as overpressure, and the teller release wave, which is commonly referred to as underpressure. Overpressure is where the energy from an explosion causes the displacement of any free-floating particles in the air to form an expanding sphere. According to the chapman get interface, the blast wave can only be seen if the detonation velocity is above supersonic speeds, since the speed of sound is in the detonation velocity equation. Since an explosion rapidly displaces any gases or particle present, it can actually be felt as it generates pressure. After the blast wave forces particles out of the area, there is a brief moment in which a vacuum is formed. This is where underpressure occurs. Underpressure is a blast wave where particles rush back into its initial location in order to refill the void and restabilize. Since the scene lacks a visible blast wave, it is telling that a high-grade explosive was not used. However, we could attribute the lack of a visible blast wave due to the distortion caused by high levels of fragmented wood and the proximity to the origin of the explosive itself. Next, we further looked into the detonation velocity by examining the explosives used and comparing them to the speed of which Ben Stiller ran. In the brief moment of which we saw the explosive itself, we were able to narrow down the explosives to three possible compounds, C4, TNT, and dynamite. We based this assumption off of the resemblance to real-world explosives and what would commonly be used to destroy a bridge. The detonation velocity of each of these compounds are true to chapman Jugut's interface in which that they all exceed supersonic speeds. According to National Geographic, the average human can run at roughly 9.3 miles per hour. We decided to give Ben Stiller the benefit of the doubt and assumed he sprinted at 15 miles per hour, which translates to 6.7 meters per second. Therefore, even a world-class Olympic sprinter would be unable to outrun the blast speed, let alone Ben Stiller. However, one can attribute the ability to outrun the explosions due to the detonations being initiated at different times, which is actually a commonly used practice in the demolitions industry. This is done to ensure that a building safely explodes onto itself, limiting the possibility of damaging nearby objects. This, combined with the lack of a visible blast wave, is not quite enough to dismiss the realism of the explosion. However, it should also be noted that Stiller did lack any visible injuries associated with the fragmented wood which strongly supports, through analysis, that Stiller may not have been present for the explosion. Since there is still a reasonable doubt remaining in our hypothesis, we had to look further into the scene to see if we can find any other inconsistencies. 
Ben Stiller is seen here as fully oriented and otherwise unharmed after experiencing a blast that blew him several feet away. All right, guy, mama, come on, mate. I'm cold. I can't feel my legs. Not now, they're in the puddle, mate. See, there's a puddle right there. No worries. Oh, good. In that portion of the scene, we are able to examine the last inconsistent behavioral component of the explosion. As mentioned previously, Stiller is clearly seen actively communicating with no signs of injury, even after being blown several feet away. The pressure wave itself is determined by the following equation, where P, the pressure of the Van Neumann spike, is equal to rho naught d squared over gamma plus 1. Rho naught is the density of the explosive, which is constant depending on the compound used, and gamma the polytropic gas constant, which varies from 1.3 to 3, depending on the compound used as well. According to U.S. military doctrine on blast wave-related injuries, injuries begin at 2 psi with the rupturing of eardrums. Since Stiller was still capable of hearing, we can assume the pressure generated was less than 2 psi. Utilizing the constants for rho naught and gamma associated with each of the explosive compounds, we have determined the detonation velocity to be between 172 to 179 meters per second. This velocity is far less than any of the detonation velocities described before. Additionally, according to the National Weather Service, winds have to exceed 500 miles per hour in order to push an adult man through the air. Comparing this to the chart given by the Center of Disease Control, Stiller would have experienced an overpressure wave of 20 psi, which is well above the US military's minimum psi for injury and where the CDC states that fatalities approach 100%. Since there is no injury whatsoever on Stiller, Stiller had to have been rigged to a wire pulley system in order to force him in the direction of the blast wave, which is also Hollywood industry standard. Combining this observation with the previous two mentioned, we can confidently conclude that 1. High explosives were not used due to the lack of a blast wave, 2. Stiller was not physically present and digitally placed in the scene because he lacked fragmentation-related injuries. And three, Stiller was on a pulley system since the overpressure wave required to achieve such an effect would have killed him at the very least ruin his day. Thank you for your time.